In this episode, I'm going to show how I replaced the command uh, entertainment system with this beautiful Alpine CarPlay system. For those of you that are new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. I really hope you enjoy it. If you like this kind of content, um, it'd be great to have you as a subscriber. So this is my 2008 Mercedes SLK uh, 350. Um, it's a facelifted version, uh, so it has a few changes from the pre-facelift. Um, there's a video which I will link up here uh, where I went through the differences between the pre and post facelift versions. But one of the real weaknesses on these cars is the uh, command audio system. And uh, this was the full navigation version that was on this car. Um, so it had uh, like CD changer, DVD changer, I think. Um, it had an aux port in the glove box there. So I was able to um, connect a, a Bluetooth dongle and uh, stream music from uh, my iPhone in a kind of you know clunky way through the auxiliary port. But I decided uh, I really wanted to you know modernize this car with an um, a CarPlay system. I decided to have a little crack at it myself. Um, I'm fairly uh, technically savvy about electrical stuff and electronics. Um, but even that, even having that knowledge, um, it was still quite tricky. So I thought I would uh, put this video out to explain, you know, the steps I went through to, to make this swap. Um, what works now and what doesn't quite work. And I've still got a few things to kind of sort out. Um, but if you're doing the same kind of thing, you can see it looks pretty good. Um, everything that I really need to work works. Um, there's a few things that I haven't connected because I don't feel they're necessary. Um, but of course you could, you could do that. So the first thing you need to do is to remove the old head unit. And it's actually quite involved the way that you have to do this. Um, this cup holder up here, there's a couple of little screws behind covers in there. I'm not sure if you can see right in there. There's a plastic cover that you pop off with your fingernail. There's another one the other side, um, just here. And then you've got a couple of screws there, which will allow you to withdraw the cup holder from here. That gives you access to the top screws for the command unit. There's two behind here that hold the command unit in. So the bottom part, you start with removing these two screws here. Again, they've got the same kind of thing, a little rubber um, grommet over the top just to protect them. There's one this side as well in there for the uh, tray. Um, but in order to get that tray out when it's unscrewed, you need to lift this trim piece out and move it slightly backwards. That's all you need to do. You don't need to take it out just move it slightly backwards. You do that by lifting up this end here with a trim tool. Um, you'll probably need to put a trim tool under this uh, metal surround as well, just to lever that up um, to give you a bit more movement. And then this uh, will slide out and you can take that out. Um, similarly, once that is out, you'll see two more screws behind the air conditioning unit, um, which allows you to uh, take that out. The top of the air conditioning unit actually fits into two little clips. Um, so it's clipped to this uh, control panel here. So this section is clipped to this section and you just need to pull it backwards in order to detach it from here. Once you've done that, um, there are another couple of screws behind here which remove this um, control panel. So you can then remove this control panel. <laughs> and finally, that gives you access to the bottom two screws uh, for the uh, command head unit. And once you've done those four screws, the command unit will just slide backwards and uh, you can detach the uh, cables at the back. So this is the rear of the uh, command unit. Um, you've got uh, an antenna socket here and then one of these will be the um, Bluetooth antenna and the other one will be the GPS antenna. So a couple of those will be connected. 
This one, I'm not sure what that does. I didn't use that when I reassembled. Most of the important connectors are in this big block here. Um, you've got your loudspeakers um, and your optical bus here. I'll leave a link in the description below to a pinout for that, um, that connector because you're gonna need some of those connectors for um, the reinstall uh, of the new unit. So you'll see I've got the front side completely disassembled. The reason for that is that the front cover uh, had this kind of rubberized coating which was completely uh, destroyed and was flaking off and scratched and looked absolutely horrible. So my initial plan was to actually try and restore the front panel. So I've effectively taken everything apart off the front panel here. This was the initial plan. <laughs> this is all the buttons which are kind of falling apart as you can see and um, the screen has got terribly scratched and it's just gross and it's the, the anti-reflective coating is falling off. And I was gonna deal with all of this stuff. I'd found a place that does replacement button uh, covers. Um, but when I tried to uh, strip the rubber coating off the, the faceplate, um, I'd previously done it with the uh, cup holder uh, front and have been very successful at taking it off with um, acetone. Um, but when I tried to do the same with this, with acetone, it just did not work and all it ended up doing was, was making more and more gouges in, in it. Um, I tried sanding it, I tried scraping it, I tried doing a whole bunch of stuff with it to get this coating off, and in the end, I just gave up. Uh, I'll see if I can find the old part. I, d I, I thought I'd kept it, but I probably threw it away in disgust. Um, it didn't work, and so I thought, okay, now's the time to just upgrade this to, to a um, CarPlay system and just put this, consign this to history. One tip that is going to be very useful when you do this is before you disconnect the command system, uh, make sure you go into your um, instrument cluster menus and make sure you set the time and date to be manual rather than automatic because the automatic time is taken from the GPS on the command system and when you remove the command system you don't get the automatic time and date. So therefore you need to set it to manual first here so you can adjust this clock separately from the GPS time on your new head unit. It's not ideal because you know they're not going to be precisely synced but at least your clock you will be able to adjust it when daylight saving and stuff uh, starts and or if you take the battery off for any length of time. Uh, so really important to uh, make that change in the settings. So I'll put a list of all the parts that I needed um, to do this in the uh, description below. Um, but this um, surround here um, I was able to get. It was specific to the um, SLK R171 and it was specific to the second gen, the facelift version. The first version is a different size, as I discovered when I got the wrong one. Um, so you need to make sure that you get the one that's specifically for uh, the second generation or the facelift SLK. So I uh, went to um, a car radio place uh, in Brookvale. I'll leave uh, a link in the description. They were really helpful like really helpful. So if you're in Sydney, I, I thoroughly recommend. They're called um, Strathfield Brookvale, which is slightly confusing. The name of the company is Strathfield, but um, they're in Brookvale and they were really helpful. They recommended this um, Alpine uh, ILX 507A. I was gonna go for a slightly lower version, but the good thing about this one is that it has wireless CarPlay. You don't need to plug in your phone to the head unit to uh, get CarPlay, connects wirelessly and I think that's really helpful because you can just leave your phone uh, in your pocket. So I thought it'd be useful to try and explain what 
connections I used to uh, install my Alpine um, 507A into my SLK. And uh, it's quite confusing um, if you've not done it before. So I thought I'd try and um, set this out on a diagram and explain what's going on. So to start with, I'll just show you what the various bits are. This is the plug that connects to the original uh, command head unit. So um, it has basically five different sections. It's the optical fiber section here. It's got power and ground here, loudspeakers here, and various other settings in these pins here. This one here is the ISO connector. So basically what you've got here is a plug that goes into the head unit and then comes out as standard power and loudspeaker ISO connectors. This one here is another connector that goes into the head unit and provides pre-amplifier output uh, for the speakers and we'll come on to those in a minute. You only need these in certain circumstances. And this one is the main harness that controls the steering wheel controls and also provides an interface here for the optical fiber system. So we'll come on to that in a minute as well. So the easiest part of this uh, interconnection is simply here where these two plugs get connected. This is the power line into the second harness and this is the power uh, from the ISO harness. There are also three flying leads which also get connected and they relate to handbrake, reverse and speed sensor. They just plug into these flying leads on this harness here. So we'll tackle this one next. This is the main power connector to this harness here and also it leads through into the head unit itself. Now the yellow is 12 volt positive and the black is ground. Now because I wasn't intending to keep the uh, backwards compatibility with the command unit, I decided just to splice in directly uh, from wires in the harness and to wires on the original um, plug. Uh, so you can pick up 12 volts and ground uh, from this connector here, pin 15 that is positive and pin 12 that is ground. So the black wire here would connect to 12 and the yellow wire here would connect to 15. Now one thing that's interesting here is that there doesn't need to be any switched power going to the head unit. And the reason for that is that the, the activation signal for the head unit comes through the CAN bus. Now this connector here is the CAN high and CAN low connectors, just a twin a uh, pair of wires which connects into the CAN bus. Now the instructions for this say that you need to route this out of the center console and under the passenger footwell where there is a CAN bus hub. You don't need to do it on this particular SLK because pin 11 here is actually CAN high and pin 9 here is CAN low. So again you can splice these directly into those two pins there. So the final thing you need to do is to connect the loudspeakers and you can either have the HK system or the non-HK system. So we'll look at the Harman Kardon system first. Now what this does is it uses this optical fiber connector here to connect directly to an amplifier in the car somewhere else. 
I think it's under the passenger footwell. That can then send signals to the individual speakers and give you all the surround sound goodness um, that it's designed for. If you have the non-HK system, which is what I have on my system, then even though you've got the fiber optic system here, it does not work the speakers. It actually connects, I believe, to other things like the phone module and things like that, but it does not connect to the speakers. So you don't need to use the optical fiber if you have a non harman Kardon system. What you do is you basically have to connect this plug on the ISO to these connectors on the main plug. Now unfortunately, even though this plug here will actually pop out of the back of this uh, connector block, it's not the same size as this. So again, as before, I decided just to uh, cut the wires, splice them in permanently, and use little um, solder heat shrink um, solder joints um, to make those permanent because I wasn't going to be retrofitting the, the command system. So basically, connecting these pins here um, from the uh, ISO to the corresponding pins in the connector block. Now there was one little weird thing about my SLK, and I'm not sure if it's the same on others, is that instead of these connectors being for um, four separate speakers, so for example, front left, front right, rear left, and rear right, it wasn't those at all. It was front left high frequencies, front left low frequencies, front right high frequencies, and front right low frequencies. So the, the woofers and the tweeters, or the high range and low range drivers, were actually wired separately. Now, obviously from here, from the ISO connector, you don't have separate outputs for the high range and low range. So basically all I did was I spliced the high range and the low range together and connected them to a single channel. So just to explain how that worked, so if you have front left positive and front left negative coming out of the ISO connector, and you have front left high range positive front left high range negative, front right high range positive, front right high range negative, you have to basically do a bit of a parallel connection here. So you connect front left positive to that one and negative to that one. You also connect front range positive to that one with a junction there and that one to a junction there. Now, I don't know whether that's the right way of doing it, but it works and sounds fine with my system. So uh, that's what I'm using and it seems to work. As I say, I used these um, soldered heat shrink um, connectors, which are great for just um, connecting wires and then a little blast of heat from a, a blowtorch and they will melt the solder and join it all together. If you do have the Harman Kardon system, then you need to use this extra harness, which takes the preamplifier outputs from the head unit and breaks them out into these phono connectors. So the easy part is that you just simply connect the uh, front phono connectors to these phono connectors here. And then you need to remove the fiber optic cable from the back of the uh, connector block and put it into this converter here. This will make sure that the sound from the head unit goes into this block here, then gets passed to the fiber optic signal and will power your speakers. So that's pretty much the story 
Um, it was more challenging than I thought it was going to be. Uh, as I say, um, the wiring was a little bit complicated. Um, I didn't preserve the backwards compatibility. Um, some people might say that's a problem, but this isn't a car that's going to be, um, you know, a classic, really. I just want it to be practical daily driver, and uh, so therefore I decided to do that hard wiring. Um, it still has a plug into the head unit, so you still can take the head unit out if you need to and replace it. Um, but uh, you wouldn't be able to put the command system back in easily. What works on this? So um, obviously you get your standard features, phone calls, uh, messages. You've got obviously um, Apple CarPlay. I tend to use Apple CarPlay for everything. Um, so that means I don't really need to use anything else. Um, if I go to the main um, Alpine menu here, uh, we've got radio as a USB lead, which is still behind here, which you can plug a dongle into. I haven't bothered to put that outside. I, I just never use it. There's an HDMI input. Who's going to use that? You know, it's just not going to happen. Aux port, why should I need that? Bluetooth, I mean, obviously Bluetooth works separately from CarPlay, but if you've got CarPlay, that's pretty much everything. Um, so things that don't work is, so if I go into radio here, you've got uh, DAB, FM and AM. Now this is the DAB antenna. Uh, it needs to be fitted in the corner of the windscreen, kind of down here on that side. Um, it's fiddly to run the cables. I haven't done it yet. It needs a bit of skill to take the trim off. I don't really want to fiddle around with that. So that would be an easy thing to put on um, the DAB antenna and then I'd get obviously digital radio. So FM actually does work. It will receive um, standard FM broadcast stations. As you can see, I've got the sound turned off because I don't want a copyright strike, but this is classic. FM here in Sydney and that um, works fine. So the weird thing is that AM does not work and the reason it's weird is because there's only one antenna connector that plugs into the that plugged into the back of the uh, original head unit which is supposed to be an AM and FM antenna. So need to do a bit of research on that. Not that I'd really ever listen to AM radio but if you ever did a cross-country kind of trip where uh, internet connectivity was not possible, um, you could still listen to AM radio uh, if that was your only alternative. So um, I'm going to look into that and see uh, if I can get that AM antenna to work. It's probably something fairly straightforward. Um, the other thing that I haven't connected is this harness here. Uh, which is basically for front and rear cameras. At some point I might put those in, but again, it's just w routing the wires, which is a pain. So I'm, I'm probably not gonna bother with that. Other things that do work are the um, volume controls. Um, so I can adjust the level of the volume through the uh, steering wheel here. I can start and end calls uh, through the steering wheel um, controls here. In the instrument cluster here you can see when you go to the tell or the navi or the audio um, you've just got blanks because it doesn't realize that there's nothing connected. Um, but when you are in those um, three areas you can use these up and down buttons um, to change tracks. On the, on the head unit. So you do get some functionality to change tracks up and down, um, but you can also do it just straight uh, directly here anyway on the, on the head unit. So um, just shows that you can keep the, um, the steering wheel controls all working with that uh, harness that I showed you earlier. So in summary, I'm really happy with the way this has turned out. Um, I think it looks fantastic. Getting rid of all those horrible buttons down the side is uh, great. 
having the CarPlay functionality is great. Having all the messaging functionality and everything that you normally get with CarPlay is fantastic. Uh, so really happy with that. So uh, let me know in the comments uh, if you've got any suggestions, any ideas on that antenna. Uh, I'd be uh, really interested to hear um, if there's any explanation for why that doesn't work. Anyway, that's just about it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I really hope you found it useful. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to smash that like. It'd be great to have you as a subscriber and hit that notification bell. You can follow me on Instagram down here. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.